All right, everyone, we have enormous news from the Korean Peninsula. Things are moving very quickly there. Kim Jong-un, the first time, uh, he has stepped, uh, put his hand across the DMZ to shake the hand of the South Korean Prime Minister. This is the first time that that's happened, uh, I believe, in North Korea's actual history. I don't think that any, uh, I don't think Kim Il-sung ever uh, shook anyone's hand across the DMZ. There have been cases where diplomats do that. Diplomats and families, military uh, meetings and stuff happen in these peace villages, but the North Korean leader himself has never gotten literally inches from the DMZ. Imagine what would have happened if the South Korean Prime Minister had pulled him over onto the South Korean side, punched him in the neck, and they had dragged him off. Then, well, then you'd have a nuclear war. No, but uh, the Korean War, it appears, has just, uh, it appears this one aspect of the last era of the Cold War has just had a flash boiling. Uh, that is, it's no longer a Cold War. It looks pretty chummy. They seemed pretty happy to shake one another's hands and take a few pictures, which is good. By the way, Trump just got his seventh key to the White House. He probably wins re-election. This counts as a major foreign policy success. He had six keys already. Jobs, job markets, uh, taxes, uh, uh, care, you know, the person running is an incumbent. Now this, he's, he had three others. If you go through the 13 keys to the White House, I think I'm counting seven for Trump, which is what he needs. Now, of course, you could have some disaster happen in the next couple of years that derails that. The economy could take a steep downturn. That would uh, remove a key. Uh, you could have a depression. Uh, you know, jobs could, the job market could collapse or something. We could enter a major war. But uh, barring one of those things, I now predict that Donald Trump is reelected in 2020. Uh, because this, you know, unless one of those things happens, he he has all the markers he needs. He probably gets an eighth key there somewhere as well if he has a major domestic policy success. Um, normal diplomacy in North Korea failed for 65 years. Everyone who looked at Trump, they thought he was nuts, and that's exactly what his strategy was. This is why he succeeded. I pointed this out about a week ago. The reason why he's doing well in North Korea is specifically an, an altered version of the madman strategy. Specifically, here's the thing. Some people are saying, well, this is ultimately between Kim Jong-un and, and, and Moon from South Korea. It's not, because they never would have had this handshake or talked at all if it hadn't been for Chinese pressure. And the Chinese only pressured North Korea because Trump looked nuts. Trump leaned on China. He, I don't know what secret deal was struck. I'm sure that he's given them several carrots, not just a good whacking with a stick. Whatever he did, it worked. The Chinese twice agreed to sanctions. It was the first time they had. Obama never got that to happen. The Chinese stonewalled him. What happened under Obama? Obama said, well, North Korea did a bad thing. The Chinese said, oh, yes, he did a very bad thing, Obama. Ultimately, though, when it came time to vote on sanctions, they vetoed them and nothing happened. The one lukewarm time they agreed to sanctions, they almost immediately went back on their word. This time it stuck. Because the Chinese don't want a greater tariff war. They've already backed down from that. They know Trump is someone to, not to mess with. Here's the reason Trump has succeeded. He understands Asian diplomacy because of his business ties to Asia. He understands these cultures. Obama did not. His community organizer skills lead him to believe a million stereotypes about the rest of the world. Oh, we're all the same. The way in which states do their diplomacy is always exactly the same as Angela Merkel or Macron or one of my other globalist friends. Not the way that it works. It doesn't work that way in a Russia or a China or a North Korea. It simply doesn't. The cultures are different. When in Rome, do as the Romans do. What's Trump doing? He's being a Roman in this case, or in this case, a Korean. So he gets them to shake hands across the DMZ. The South Korean leader doesn't seem to have any qualms with saying, oh yeah, Trump was instrumental in making this happen. Yes, thank you. Now he's called Trump a dangerous and evil individual before. And he's giving him credit. Oh, trust me, this is going to be really good for Trump's approval. He's going to be able to take credit, at least in part, for ending a 65-year-old conflict. A conflict that has been waged for most Americans' entire lifespans. Very few Americans actually have been alive a day where the Korean War didn't exist. The boomers, they're being born in the wake of World War II. A lot of them, they were born around the era Korea was already being waged. Yes, most Americans don't remember a day that we haven't technically been at war. This treaty will be great, if it happens, of course. There's still the possibility that you have a denigration of that relationship, that they can't hammer out the details. But North Korea is also putting denuclearization on the table. Now, I'll, be, I'll believe it when I see it. 
But the concept, I mean, if Korea, if they end the war, there's really no more reason for North Korea to have nukes. Their southern and northern borders are both bordered by people that aren't going to help us invade. Nor by, why the hell would we want to? If there's a peace treaty there and we no longer have to worry about a war, hey, why do we need troops there? We'll, we'll be part of the peace process too. We'll have an embassy in Pyongyang. By the way, this means Americans at some point in the future, maybe we can actually travel there about worrying about ending up like that one kid there who ended up brain dead and died two days after they released him. This is also a good sign for getting American prisoners released. I mean, if there's going to be peace anyway, there's no reason to have prisoners. We'd probably end up releasing some people too. Good. Good. Maybe we can avoid uh, nuclear war now. Uh, the alarmists always said, uh, well, this is going to be where World War III starts. North Korea and South Korea will get into it. The U.S. and China will end up backing the respective uh, uh, puppets. No, that was never going to happen. The big worry, though, the big worry is that there would be a limited regional nuclear conflict in which North and South Korea basically cease to exist. China, Japan, and at least part of Russia probably get hit. Uh, and, you know, tens or hundreds of millions of people die. That was always the big concern. It wouldn't really directly affect the U.S., but it would certainly affect everyone around the area of the Korean Peninsula, including one of our main allies, Japan, including a pair of nuclear states that themselves would easily get involved. China would get involved if that were to happen. Kim Jong-un apparently saw the light of realizing that, and he's looking forward, I think. This is what I think he wants. He wants a reunification process in which there is semi-autonomy, at least, uh, for his inner circle to continue operating in some, some what would become provincial fashion. He wants to keep up his lifestyle, and he, wants to, he doesn't want to go to prison. He doesn't want the, uh, to uh, be dragged before some international body to face trial for crimes against humanity, uh, or something like that, or, or for you know, uh, developing rogue nukes. Uh, he realizes maybe the only way to avoid a nuclear conflict, it could be that the Chinese have convinced him successfully, look, Trump is actively planning to invade. If you don't get rid of the nukes, you're dead. So too will all Korean people. You'll be looked at as a monster for the rest of eternity for the extinction of an entire race of people. That's essentially uh, <laughs> what could happen uh, under those circumstances. Plus, you know, some tens of millions of dead people around in other countries. I don't think Kim Jong-un wants that. No, because he is a sane actor. When people cast him as nuts, he's not nuts. He's not insane. He's a strong-arm, charismatic dictator, yes, but he's not insane. Tyrannical, yes. Uh, evil, okay. I guess, you know, in, in subjective moral terms, maybe an evil individual, but not nuts. A nut doesn't uh, realize, hey, you know, I'm probably going to get killed along with my wife, any kids that I may or may not have, and everyone else in my family. Oh, you mean that uh, all of Korea's history will essentially be vaporized. Maybe I want to avoid this. Yeah. And so if the only alternative is, hey, I'm going to get uh, ganged up on by everyone if I don't have a peace process going in here, a uh, peace process is probably uh, better. He will then use his nuclear leverage temporarily to say, hey, number one, I want the U.S. to guarantee I'm not facing trial. No one in my family is facing trial. I want clemency for my generals. Number two, I want to continue on in my life of luxury. I'm not giving that up. Number three, I, I, I'm going to need a few, uh, you, know, uh, you know, consolations here and there. I'm going to need at least one of these palaces to stay mine. Now, it's private property now. You know, I'm a capitalist. Get the fuck off my lawn. <laughs> It'd be interesting. But, uh, yeah, so if this actually works, if this actually happens, if there is a lasting uh, binding treaty, North and South Korea dismantle, uh, you know, maybe the fortifications of the DMZ. It's finally no longer a no man's land of landmines. By the way, it's going to take half of forever to clear out all the landmines alone. How many do you think there are there? It's got to be in the hundreds of thousands. I mean, it's, it's got to be a monstrous number. Now, defectors will try to walk across only to, you know, step on one and, you know, they don't exist anymore. So no more, no cleanup on aisle three because no one dares to go after the corpse, probably. Just sit there and fester. Uh, they're going to have to uh, use some excellent equipment to uh, build bridges between what used to be two countries. Because if there's peace, there might as well be reunification. I mean, then they have to hammer out the political solution. But it's beginning to look a little bit like the latter-day Soviet Union post-collapse you know, collapse of the Berlin Wall. Things will get, I think, uh, if this happens demonstrably better. It will happen probably more quickly uh, than anyone anticipated, certainly than I did. And it will give Trump a huge boost in approval. Look, that's a peacemaker, not a warmonger. That's a good thing. I, uh, having uh, said, I oppose serious strikes. In the Middle East, it's uh, more mediocre how he's operating. 
in Korea, this is a major victory. This is a major win for Donald Trump, even if it's only an indirect manner in which he was truly responsible. It's still a major win for him. That's about all. Peace out.